Welcome back to some medical coverage this morning. We have Dr. Laura Waters, who's a pediatrician at Mercy, joining us. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Yeah, and so uh, today we're talking about something that I did a quick Google search on this morning, and you can find anywhere from Amazon to various websites, and that's amber teething necklaces. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what they are and what parents might try to use them for? So amber teething necklaces are pretty popular. I see a lot of kids using them. Um, and basically what parents are trying to use them for is to help with the pain from teething uh, okay. that their infants experience. Okay, but there are some dangers associated with the necklaces as well. Yes, there are. So the risk is twofold. So there are two main risks. The first is going to be choking. Um, if the necklace was to break, um, obviously those are small little beads and they're perfect to fit in a child's airway. So um, they can choke on them that way. And then the other concern is strangulation. There was actually an 18-month-old child who um, died, and the report came out in December of last year um, of this child dying from getting strangulated by the necklace. Um, and so, again, in general, just whether it's an amber teethy necklace or anything else, um, there really should not be anything around your child's neck okay. when they're an infant because of that risk of something getting twisted around their neck or okay. like getting strangled. So even if mom or dad is the one wearing the teething necklace, that can cause the choking, and then if the baby's wearing the necklace, that can cause strangulation Absolutely. as well. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so that warning issued in December of last year, but there are, I mean, this is something that all babies go through, mm -hmm. so are there some safer alternatives for them? Yeah, so a lot of the things that we try and use that are safe are going to be the um, you know, the teethers that the kids can chew on. Um, a lot of those are kind of silicone based or a little bit more firm um, that helps massage the gums. Um, you can also use like a cold washcloth um, and let them kind of gum on that. And then, of course, if it's that bad, then you can always use like Tylenol or something like that if your child's older. So. Okay, and then I saw something too that with the washcloths, you can even tie them in a knot and stick them in the mm -hmm. freezer. Yeah. And so that gives them a little bit more of a bite. Yeah. And you want to let it cool down just a little bit so it's not completely frozen. Okay. Um, so that then there's not any kind of concern about frostbite or for it being too hard on their gums. Okay. But as a pediatrician, you're open to people and used to people coming to you with concerns yeah. about their kids teething and are willing to have a conversation about some Absolutely. Tylenol. Okay. Absolutely. It's something that we talk about every day. Okay, but the main, the bottom line here is that those teething necklaces are dangerous and, you know, we don't want those things yeah. to happen to our kids. Yeah, there's a lot of claims that they're making um, and there's no scientific proof to prove that um, the amber teething necklaces are actually beneficial at all. And so what are they actually made of? Amber or does it so depend? Some of them can be wood, some of them can be silicone, some of them are amber, um, but usually it's very rare that they truly are true amber necklaces. Okay, and it with the internet, like a lot of things now, it would be pretty hard to verify that. Yeah, there are a lot of claims, but um, nothing that's safe, and so there are a lot of other safe alternatives. So, Okay, well, Dr. Waters, thanks for joining us this morning. We are very happy to have you back here on the show.